I look across the raging war and feel the steady beating of my heart. Arashi no mai no shizuke sari. Yai ba furi wa rashite ku. Day and welcome to World of Warships. I'm Tihi and this is the Des Moines class heavy cruiser. It's a ship that's been around since, well, pretty much the beginning of the game and despite all the new ships being added to the game, in my opinion, it remains one of the strongest tier 10 ships around. It's pretty common for people to label it a jack of all trades, but in my opinion it's a little bit better than that. Well, its guns are often characterized as being kind of floaty but despite having the really floaty arcs, the guns do actually perform quite well at range. You've got really good high explosive, uh, your armor piercing is notorious for having amazing penetration and also amazing penetration angles, which means that bouncing of broadsides is much less likely to happen in the Des Moines than compared to another ship such as, well, the Hindenburg. Now returning to the game, my plan here is to get as close to A as possible and try and cover as much of the cap with my radar as I can. And hopefully I can help out this Benson and this Harakaze. And that's when the Bismarck shows up. So I'm trying to desperately shoot over this mountain, but unfortunately from this angle, uh, only my back turret's able to get shots. But when you've got a 5 second reload, you can just keep spamming away. It's also important to note that I'm trying to angle the ship as much as possible while still getting all three turrets firing. Uh, because the Des Moines has 27mm of bow armor, it's actually able to angle against the guns of the Bismarck and the Turpets, and well, after this newest patch hits, it'll be able to angle against the guns of the Monarch as well. Uh, we do manage to get a nice little fire there seems to be ticking away so the Bismarck is making the correct choice where he's not damage controlling immediately. But we can afford to sit down and wait. Uh, this is where I make a slight misplay. I'm trying to radar the Bismarck but if you look at the minimap he's well out of range so I'm trying to creep forward a bit more trying to see if I can get him into that radar range. And a Fletcher pops up. Uh, he's behind this island, but these arcs, which are often a burden to some players, are actually really useful in s lobbing them over right on top of this Fletcher. You might have noticed from the radar duration that I'm actually using the radar module which increases the duration by, I believe, 40%. And, well, that gets this duration up to 56 seconds, which is a little bit ridiculous, but, hell, it's awesome. So, the Bismarck pops up again, and we get a quite lucky shot there where we get two fires and a single salvo, which is nice. And I'm instant load uh, armor piercing here just to try and get some damage on the broadside. Uh, you might have noticed that I wasn't quite angle enough there, in my opinion. I think if the Bismarck had aimed a little bit lower, I might have actually taken some significant damage. So, that was a slight misplay. Uh, but fortunately, because I'm behind that loaded island, it made it quite difficult for the Bismarck to pinpoint my exact waterline. I'm trying to slow down to see if these Lexington planes are going to come within my anti-aircraft bubble, but he's not that foolish. Anyway, my plan now is to try and sneak around to this side of the island, and hopefully spam something at this Amaki over here. Unfortunately those planes are ruining my day and I'm getting spotted and I can tell from priority target that I'm being targeted by one of those battleships slightly. So I have to keep moving because staying stationary in this sort of position is just asking to be whacked really hard. The Des Moines can angle against the Bismarck and the Turpets but against guns like the 410mm of the Yamagi, uh, it's going to hurt. It's going to be citadels for days. As you can see, the floaty arcs make engaging targets these long ranges a little bit awkward, but you fire so fast that it's manageable. All you have to do is adjust your aim each salvo, and eventually the shells will start hitting. This Amagi, I believe, has just burned his damage con, so if I can get a fire here, and well, looks like the carrier has gotten the fire, so he is, yeah, he's down. And I think it's at this moment 
that I've realized that there's a Des Moines, also a Kutuzov and a Bismarck, which might be pushing around that side. And while that area of the map is pretty useless, if they do get around, they can kind of get flanking shots at our people at B. So I want to try and prevent that as much as possible. Also, I apologize for the stuttering and the replay. Uh, this actually happened during the game, so I think... I assume it was either server problems, or it might have been the fact that I'm playing from Sydney, so... You know, internet connection on a rather large island is kind of bad sometimes. Anyway, I'm trying to lob some shells over at this Des Moines, but he's reversing, so it's not going to happen. We can also see that our team's kind of abandoned C, and they've all kind of made a little cluster around B. Oh, I think it's at this point where I started to uh, censor the chat. So we instead we'll have this wonderful picture of a potato. Because there are some rather uncivil people. Anyway, spamming some high explosive at this guy. Uh, you'll notice I'm not actually spotted, so I'm actually trying to slow down to try and keep this bit of an island between us. Um, the more free damage I can get, the better. Uh, I don't really want to be trading damage with another Des Moines. I've switched to armor piercing, and you can kind of see just how great the penetration angles are. Because he is angled, and it's at a fairly long range, and we're still getting some really massive hits. Um, a slight misplay here is that I'm aiming really high. My idea is that I'm going to hit the top of the deck and try and pen through there, because I didn't think I could get citadels. But as you saw from that sal salvo, uh, that's wrong. I should have been angling at the waterline, and I probably would have been able to kill him much quicker. But, well... He's gonna. Ex he's dead now. And he's burning in two places. And I sh what I should be watching out for here is that there are two destroyers in A cap, and they're about to push around, or at least, well, for, with the power of hindsight, they're going to be pushing around. But I should have probably expected it during this game as well. And we do have another Des Moines here, so this might have been his radar. Actually, no, it wasn't. That was the Moskva there. Anyway, these destroyers are making a rather suicidal push out here into three tier 10 cruisers. Yeah, derpa shop there. And while you can kind of see that the sheer amount of high explosive you can throw out means that any destroyer that kind of gets anywhere nearby is going to die. And I instantly switched to armor piercing here because you can see the enemy cruiser is, well, very broadside. And that's going to be a mistake for him. He is burning. I believe he's going to damage one. And you can see my shells going down. The first salvo does miss, but you fire so quickly it doesn't matter so much. And there we go, there's 17,000 health off. So it's why you do not show broadside to a Des Moines. And we switch back instantly to high explosive here, because uh, Bismarck is broadside, so armor piercing could be a viable strategy, but I do want the fire damage. And he's still broadside. I, no, I believe he's accelerating now. There we go, we've got the second fire. You can see that I'm actually deliberately angled, uh, aiming for the area of the superstructure which wasn't on fire. Uh, now I'm trying to aim at the back for fire, but now I switch back to armor piercing because I want to try and finish him off. And we get a nice-ish salvo there for 3.7. And we catch him on the tail for a small bit and he's left on 100 health, naturally. Uh, we really only needed one more shell hit there, so yeah, I guess our aiming could have been slightly better. Um, fortunately, that won't be an issue because I think one of our destroyers is going to finish him off. Uh, destroyers? Thank you. Okay. Uh, now we're pushing up, and even though like we've been doing so much damage, and it seems that the A cap has been quite successful, the other side has collapsed. And so while we've got the cap advantage, the enemy team has the point advantage, and probably the ship advantage, because uh, we've lost our carrier to the Fletcher. And this Kutuzov is showing broadside, so instantly I switch back to armor piercing. Um, again, a small misplay, 
I'm aiming a slight bit too high, which is why I'm getting lots of penetrations, a couple over penetrations, but no citadels. And now I started aiming low enough, and we're starting to get the good damage. I uh, picked up a couple of awards, which is nice. And yeah, this is where I didn't react properly. I was too busy trying to pummel AP into that Kudasov to notice those planes. So I do pop defensive AA, but it's too little and a bit too late. We do catch a couple planes on the way out. Uh, so I guess that's kind of a risk with the Des Moines. If you're firing so quickly, it's very easy to get caught up in the moment and get distracted. Uh, you'll also notice that I double tapped P, and that forces your defensive fire on cooldown. So it turns your AA off, and then you turn it back on again, and your defensive fire, even if it's still got time left, uh, will go back on cooldown. And now I'm angling bow into the turpids, because if you remember what I said earlier, uh, his guns have absolutely no chance of citadeling me from the front. So I can angle here for all day, whereas he can't afford to be sitting there in front of my guns. Uh, this sort of position does mean I can't fire my back turret, but I've got 66% of my firepower at the front, so it's not so much of a problem. Unfortunately, RN Jesus doesn't seem to want to give fires today, so we'll just keep going. And there's a Hindenburg putting up, uh, pu pushing up. And I'm a little bit worried that it'll push up and try and taunt me, because even though my armor piercing is really good, I don't think I'll be able to kill him quick enough. And oh, finally Iron Jesus has decided we're gonna fire. And I've gotten a bit too close to this island actually. Oh, the shells are starting to hit, and the Fletcher is spotted. Oh, I'm trying to turn my turrets over, but in my captain build I'm not actually using expert marksmen. Uh, instead I'm opting to take Adrenaline Rush, so maybe it might have helped there. Anyway, now we have the 56 second radar again, and this Fletcher has made a major error by deciding to smoke up at 8km. Unfortunately our Yuga mode does go down, and I'm having a bit of a potato aim here. Uh, should be aiming properly soon. And, oh, nope, never mind, another potato shot. Okay, it looks like the Hindenburg on the uh, minimap is actually going after our other Des Moines, but fortunately he gets taken out, he must have eaten one of those Yukimo torpedoes earlier. Um, I'm not really sure what the Fletcher is doing, he's probably expecting the radar to end or something, but it's not going to end, this is a 56 second Des Moines radar. Um, and now with his engine dead, he's dead. Ah, uh, the Minotaur also pushed in, so evidently he probably also thought there wasn't radar. Um, so we are going to start angling soon because Minotaur AP is very scary and also we have the threat of Fletcher torpedoes. Uh, and there's the Fletcher torpedoes. Fortunately he decided that firing widespreads was a good idea. It, it's not a good idea, but it's good for us. Um, Minotaur looks like he's damage con, and so if we get another fire it should hurt him quite significantly. And now I think the Moskva is using his radar, which is really good for us. And this time I do react to the plane, so I've activated defensive fire, and in between salvos I'm trying to focus fire the different squadrons down. Uh, you can't really see that in the replay though. Um, and now we're firing blind into the smoke. I know it's like a battleship thing, but it works just as well on a cruiser, especially a cruiser which fires as, uh, as quickly as the Des Moines. So we'll keep spamming shells into the general direction, and we do get the kill. And back to armor piercing, because that Kutuzov who got away earlier is broadside again, and well, we're not making that same mistake. So we're firing right at the waterline this time, and those shells should kill him, and oh, well, we fire unnecessarily, and the server glitches a bit there. But that is actually our crafting, which is nice. And now we're back to high explosive, and this Turpitz is running away, but we should be able to pick him up before he gets behind the island. Just past 230,000 damage, which is a pretty good game for Des Moines. And we've got a healthy amount of plane kills on top of that. Looking at the health pull down below, I actually haven't tanked too much damage, uh, which is usually a good thing, but I suppose I could have afforded to be a little bit more aggressive towards the end, and we might have been able to pick up a little bit more damage. But probably better to play, uh, play it a bit safe. And now we don't have defensive fire, but even without defensive fire, 
Des Moines anti-aircraft is absolutely brutal. So these returning bombers are going to get shot down. And it looks like the Lexington is starting to run out of planes because that is a less than full strength squadron coming in. And these planes are disappearing. The Lexington was last spotted behind that little island to my right, so that's why I'm aiming over there. But in hindsight, looking at the direction of the planes, he's no longer there. Um, but it looks like we're going to be winning on points before we get to hunt him down. And he's got another incoming single squadron of dive bombers. But since we've got a couple seconds of the game left, I'm just going to defensive fire them down. And you can see how quickly they melt Des Moines anti-aircraft. And that's the end of it. Now looking at our post-battle results, we can see we got 35 planes from that Lexington. And seeing as the Lexington only has about 70 to 80 planes, that's quite a significant amount. And we've got a lot of experience, but of course we're running a lot of experience flags. And we've got the premium camo as well, which is also why we have so much credits from that one. A uh, nice chunk of free experience and a couple medals to go along with it, including a Kraken, which is always good. And in the post-battle results, we can see we got 3,700 base experience. And while well, part of that is due to the fact that we got lots of plane kills, and also the fact that we damaged quite a few destroyers. Because you've got to remember that you get experience based on the percentage of damage due to a ship. So taking off 5,000 damage from a Shimikaze, is worth a lot more than taking just 5,000 off a battleship. And now we'll quickly flick through the detailed report and the credits and experience screen. I hope you didn't find the video completely boring, so if you enjoyed it please consider leaving a like and if you want to see more content please subscribe to the channel and leave in the comments section what any ships or tactics that you want us to look at next.